it's it's there's just so many. It all happens by such. Um, it's a very it's a it's an organic process. So if I read a script that I think is really amazing, but I can tell there's some things that might be a little too provocative about it, then I work really hard to attract a cast that might get it financed more easily. Or I just I'm always looking for an angle or a hook to try to to try to promote it. I don't make movies simply for the sake of being provocative. That does, often I'll make a film and it doesn't occur to me that it will cause some controversy, but it does. But I don't set out to make a film thinking it will be controversial. No, I mean, if I really like it, then I believe somewhere, and I guess this is just uh, something I have to believe, I believe that great work rises to the top. So if it's really great, I'm going to feel that I have to make it. Sometimes there's movies I've read that aren't so great, but they do have some controversial elements. And uh, the filmmaker would say to me, oh, you're too afraid to make this. But that's not the case. I'm not afraid to do anything um, when it comes to movies. I'm afraid to do plenty of things when it doesn't come to movies. <clears throat> but when it comes to movies, I have no fear. My only fear is of mediocrity, is of making something that I don't think is good. Right. I mean, that was, you know, if I'd had my preference, I wanted to come out at the same time as the other film, because I thought then at least we could have been part of the discussion. But Warner Brothers didn't want to do that. And, um, and it was hard. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think the film will have a long life on DVD. And, um, and, and already, when I go to websites to discuss the film, they say this film is so much better than Capote, Toby Jones's performance is so extraordinary. How did this happen? How did it get overlooked? Um, so I feel that ultimately it will have its rightful place in history. I mean, it's, it's rare that he comes with a complete script to me. Usually he says, you know, you know, I really want to make a film about Phil and the Blight. And then he starts to tell me about what he wants to make the film about, and I start to provide whatever support. I mean, with Far From Heaven, there wasn't much support. All he had to do was go write that script. Um, with I'm Not There, he really was concerned that before he got too deeply into it, that he knew that he had the music rights. So while he was conceiving of the film, I was off trying to figure out who I go to, how do I figure it out, who do I get the rights from, what am I asking for? I never quite attacked anything that big. So um, it, was, it was quite an enterprise. I think his trademark is he's constantly fascinated with identity, whether it's a superstar, the Karen Carpenter story, a movie you may or may not be seeing this week, uh, where he really make, ask the question, like, can you identify with a, with a dog? Can you identify and feel um, passion and compassion for an inanimate object, basically? Um, you know, in, uh, in Poison, he really played with the idea of shifting identities. Um, in Safe, he played with the notion of this, you know, this woman who was so hollow um, that, you know, how could you play, how could you identify with a character like that? I think that's really his trademark. And where's this going to be on a blog? <laughs>